Hello everyone, my name is Lost, and welcome back to episode 3. Um, so, this episode, what we're going to do is we are going to, um, first of all, make sure that the background, uh, so like the lane, goes across the entire room. Uh, we're going to add a new object co called Control that's going to deal with the background. Um, and we're going to add proper tower placement for the enemies. And then to finish with, we're going to just add some um, nice player animations for the for the main character. We're going to make, in the end, I think we're going to have a ranged character and a, a melee character. First, we're going to work on the melee character. Of course, I'll provide you with all the art and animation and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, let's get cracking. You'll find all that in the description, by the way. So, to begin with, we need to go to the background and remove it from the room because uh, it's no longer necessary. We're going to just be drawing it instead. Uh, because it's just a bit better to do it this way. I mean, ultimately, I don't think you want to use massive images like we're using. Uh, I think you want to be using tiles, but you know what? <laughs> I don't really want to do that. Oh, there's a quick look at the character I've, I've created for us. This is the guy we're going to be using. Uh, and later on, we'll make a ranged character. So just add both of them, like I'm doing, to the same uh, sprite file thing, or background image, or whatever. Uh, set the speed to zero. I don't actually know if you need to do this here, but I don't know. I always tend to do it anyway. Uh, I tend to set the speed, and I want it in the room. I don't think you have to do that here, but I just tend to do that. I'm not sure why I do it. Habit? I'm not sure if it's compulsory, but uh, whatever. Uh, anyway, we need to create a new object. Just object control. Um, and this is gonna this is essentially gonna obviously, you know, control a couple of things and it's gonna place the towers as well. Rather than putting them in manually into the map. Because it's gonna be hard to visualise now, because obviously in the room editor you get you don't get to see the background anymore. So we're gonna create them using code. Uh, yeah, obviously the depth has got to be one so the background is actually in the background. Obviously the higher that is, the further away from you the uh, object is, if you like. But yeah, these I found, or at least for now, are the best um, positions to put the object towers in. I think we all know what Instance Create does. On Game Maker 1, obviously you don't have to do the layer bit, it's just instant, Instance Create. But yeah, I'm not going to explain this too much, I think we all know what Instance Create does. Um... But yeah, I might just speed this bit up, actually. Right, into the draw event, this is where we're going to draw the background. Uh, and what we're going to do here is we're going to draw the background um, right across the map. But for the first one, for the first image, um, it's not going to draw it. Oh, it's only going to draw it, sorry, if um, the view X, so I that's like the camera, where the camera is, if it is less than three screens away. Um, it, it's just a bit more optimal to do this. Uh, potentially like a little task for you guys, if you wanted like an e extra thing to try and do. You could try and optimize this a bit, uh, so that, you know, if, if you can figure it out, you can sort of figure out where, um, when you look at where the camera is, in relation to that, which backgrounds don't have to be drawn, like which part of the screen, then you could perhaps do that if you wanted to, but otherwise, we're just going to sort of do like a semi optimization here. Uh, but you're more than welcome to, <laughs> you know, play with that if you want to. Uh, now, this is where we draw the second sprite, like the second map, using sub image one and two. Obviously, that's, that's what I'm writing now, zero. Uh, so that's the first sub image. Um, yeah, so obviously we've got um, the middle two background pieces drawn at all times. Now the front, the front one, like I said, only draws if the camera's there, and the back one, the the end bit of the map will only draw if the camera is is past um, the second background image. So draw sprite at twelve eighty. I'm sorry if I haven't explained that very well. <laughs> I didn't feel like I explained it very well at all, but uh, hopefully you'll understand that, and uh, hopefully you can you can have a little play with it as well. 
Uh, I've actually forgotten what I do now. <laughs> oh yeah. So, we're going to take the room speed out of um, the object's warrior now because it doesn't really need to be there anymore now that we have a control object. And we're just going to pop it in this one instead. And, oh yeah, the, there's another bug that I want to fix. It's not really a bug, I just kind of forgot to do it. Is that um, on the camera? Um, oh, ignore ignore what I just deleted there. That was from a test earlier. And also, I've messed up a bit in here. If you see where it says um, where the mouse is now, just under it, if view x is smaller than three thousand eight hundred and forty to do that, I've just messed it up. You could ignore this bit for now. I fix it in like a second. Because uh, what I'm essentially trying to do here is I want to stop the camera from going past the end of the screen to the right. Um, and obviously I've just messed this up a little bit, but I do fix this in a moment. Uh, perhaps this doesn't need to be in the video, I will check when I'm editing. Oh yeah, um, and I also... I also forgot to put the object in the room, like I always do, so let's get that sorted. Right then, so let's just go into the uh, room and place it in there and then I believe it works after this uh, yep okay good I'm glad I show you <laughs> uh, yeah so there we go the backgrounds now there the towers there yep towers are looking good well I mean they're a bit shit right <laughs> but <laughs> they're in place that's where we want them oh yeah and I th this is what I was talking about you know I was um, the view x situation uh, we fix that in a moment, uh, just because I've kind of, well, I've I've ruined it really. I've I've screwed it up, but yeah, let's just fix that now. Right, so yeah, let's get this fixed real quick. So we need to be an object warrior, just right into, right, into, right into the step, and then yeah, we just copy that bit. I mean, hopefully you haven't messed this up as well. I think I explained it earlier, but yeah, now it's fixed. So I think yeah, I think we check it. And yeah, there we go. All good. Although actually it was at the end of the room where the problem was, but yeah, it's fixed. There we go. Right, now we'll get on to the the better quality character and stuff. Because now that I've got the animations in place for the, the it's gonna be the idol in the run, uh, the next episode we'll be able to work on um attacking the towers. And then perhaps after that we'll get onto like minion spawning and stuff and then we'll I don't know. That's when we have to start on the skills, right? And we'll like do a, a, a nice UI type thing. Uh, oh yeah, I also changed something in here, uh, just where the where it creates the projectile. Instead of coming out the bottom of it, I'm going to make it come out of the center of the image. Uh, so I'm I'm saying the Y minus the sprite height divide two, and the reason. I've done that is because if you think about where the Y is, it's, it's essentially the origin of the image and the origin of the tower. If you look at you, if you look at your sprite, it's at the bottom center, and it has to be there really, just for it makes it easy to place. But yeah, that's how you then create the sprite properly. And it it looks a lot better actually. It does look a lot better. So let's have a look. Uh, I might end up making the sort of images better, like the sprites better for the towers and stuff. I'm not sure yet. I don't know. I don't really know what I can do yet. Because all I've done there is I've just been a bit fancy with Photoshop. Like I've found a, you know, I found a, um, just a texture and then did some fillers to it and slapped it on. And... Right then, so as I said at the start of the video, let's uh, do the animations and you'll find these in the description below feel free to use these for whatever you want um, yeah I'm, I, I rushed on these a little bit actually but you know that they're gonna work for this they're not too bad they're alright so just rename that one to warrior idle uh, and then you can just import them in as well <laughs> he's showing a little bit of nipple there <laughs> but whatever it's fine And yeah, make sure the origin is at the very center of his feet there. And then edit the collision mask or else things are just going to look really weird. 
um, and you just want it bound as tightly to him as possible don't worry about the ear I'm not worried about that at all but yeah if you can just band it to him nicely there then yeah there we go don't worry about the end of the spear or like <laughs> obviously not the shadow and then I think we're just going to do the same thing yeah just make sure it all fits in that's fine and then we're going to do the same thing for the next one I think the run animation so yeah it's just the same deal here Oh well, I've, I've called it walk, but whatever it is, it's the moving animation, right? So, yeah, same deal. Make sure the origin is roughly in the same place. You don't have to get that perfect, but if it's roughly in the same thing, then it'll just look nicer. Like it'll be a smoother transition between the animations. So yeah, same applies as tight as possible, ignoring the ear. Well, I could have done that tighter on the head, couldn't I? But whatever, that's the tan side, right? If you can do it tighter than I did, I would do that, and I'll I'll just go back and edit, man. So new variable, two new variables. Actually, we're going to specify the animations so that we can uh, swap between them just using the using these um, variables. Uh, this will just be helpful when we do it for the uh, the range character as well. Although you don't, you don't. I, I guess you don't actually have to create those variables. You could just use, you know, you you could just specify when you when you go to like the sprite index. You could specify just like the the name of the sprite. But I don't know. I I kind of just like to do it this way. Right. Yeah. So we're gonna make our guy change direction if um, we've clicked to the right of him then he'll face to the right whereas if we click to the left he'll face to the left that's all this is and I, I've done it wrong I've put image index it should be image x scale but don't worry we we'll fix that in a second I think I'll test it now and realize it doesn't work but yeah we then have to say sprite index equals it should be now the yep the run because obviously at this point we're running an image index is zero just so that it goes back to the very first animation of the run and then yeah now we just uh, make sure that once he's stopped he goes back to the idle animation and yeah just the image index zero and then the same applies to this uh, this condition as well because obviously that they're both they both mean we've stopped and we now need to go back to the idle animation we may make a damaged animation at some point I'm not sure I'll have to I'll have to see maybe I'll actually yeah I probably will and I'll probably add that in the next episode as well when I do the attacking animation and then we'll, we'll get like health going for the towers and stuff oh yeah image speed at 0 0.5 this is just how fast our character's um, speed is. I think we, I think I play with that a little bit in this video, so we'll see what happens. I'm just looking for the right speed. I, I feel like that's a little bit too fast. It looks a bit, little bit wonky, right? And that's also when I realised I've messed up in the step event with the, yeah, with this bit here. It should be image x scale. Come on, lost. You can do it. You can work it out. Can I? Come on. There we go. Really? Yeah, there we are. Uh, yeah, now it now it works just fine. I think does it? Yeah, it does. Smash it! And now we need obviously now we need to play with the <laughs> the health bar because it's right in the middle of his head. Uh, oh, I guess I play with this a bit first. I think I settle on four. This. 3, 0.33 is really slow. See, it, it looks real wonky now. It looks real. But I think 4 is the sweet spot. So let's see. Uh, yeah, I think that's alright, isn't it? It's better than it was. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's fine. I mean, you, you guys, obviously, do whatever you want. You can change that. Uh, 
And now I mess around with the health bar for a little bit. Um, I'm just going to skip ahead until I get to the correct setting for this. And there we go. That's the right one. So it's now above his head completely. There we go. And yeah, let's just make sure it's all still working. Because uh, we haven't tested it so far. Oh yeah, I don't like what's going on there as well. If you see, every time I'm right clicking, despite the fact it's already moving, it's, it's resetting his animation to the very first point, which looks really dodgy, so we'll fix, we fix that in a moment. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Everything's still working, looks alright. And yeah, it's actually really, it's an easy fix, this one. Really easy fix. So you just have to say, if moving is false, uh, then change the uh, sprite index, so the animation and the image index back to zero. That way, if you're already moving, it won't reset the image index back to zero. So it, there we go, I'm, I'm clicking and it's just continuing through the animation. Uh, but yeah, I think that's about it for this episode, guys. Uh, yeah, I think it is. So, so yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will see you next time.